Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone, to the channel IT Simplified. I hope you're having a good time with your family and friends and liking this session. In today's video in Azure, I'm here to talk about one of the important features within Blob Storage called Data Lifecycle Management. So if you have been following my channel, I have created a lot of videos on the Azure Storage because this is one of the top three services which are commonly used. And when we talk about data, lifecycle management of it, it's very important for any company. And that is what I thought that uh, I'll take a session on this one. So let's get started. And uh, let me take an example. Say there's a company with the name IT Simplified, and they have a data of around about uh, one terabyte that they want to move to cloud. Now, one thing I will tell about uh, cloud storage is that, and I always say in my uh, discussions with customer that uh, cloud storage is cheapest service within Azure portfolio, or in fact, with any cloud vendor. But if you don't keep an eye on this, right, this can really surprise you at the end of the month. And if you don't have a good lifecycle management, from the compliance perspective also, it can definitely hurt you. So you got to make sure that uh, you have uh, proper tools that you can utilize, which is already there as part of the service. There is no specific cost associated. There is no cost for using this and you're using that uh, judiciously. So this fictitious company, say IT Simplified, has one terabyte of data and they want to move this to cloud. And for this, as you know that you need to create a storage account. And in that you create containers. And you can have uh, multiple containers uh, in the same storage account, right? Now, when you create a storage account, you can specify what tier you want. You can have a hot, cool, and archival tier. Now, you can set tiering hot and cool only at the storage account level, but you can set any of these three tiers at the blob level. So that's the flexibility you get, but uh, whatever you have uh, set at the storage account that uh, is inferred basically. So if you have a hot tier on the storage account, your blob will be automatically uh, hot tier, but you can change it to cool or archival. But ID Simplified wants one terabyte of data in the cloud and they want to keep this data for 10 years. They have this uh, compliance requirement and the SLA, which asks them to meet that. And uh, they want to make sure that the data is kept for 10 years. So now what is the strategy? What can we do in this, right? And how to utilize this? So say, for example, let's talk about the pricing. And I'm just talking about the hypothetical number over here that uh, say a one terabyte of data cost $10 for hot tier, $5 for cool tier and for archival, it's two. And if you have to uh, calculate this for 10 years, so 10 times 120, so it's $1,200. It should be 600 for cool and uh, I think 240 for archival, right? So this is what you're gonna pay if you want to use any of the tier without having to use lifecycle management. So you can, you think that, oh, archival tier is the cheapest. Why can't I just put in that? So it all depends upon the usage. So you need to understand what is the usage of this company, how they want to access, because uh, depending on what tier you choose, uh, there'll be a cost of access. For example, archival has the lowest storage cost, but when it comes to retrieving the data, it is the highest cost. Cool has a little bit less as compared to the archival and hot has no retrieval data cost, but it has the highest storage cost. So these are some things that you have to keep in mind when you're talking about lifecycle management. Now, that's one thing. Now, other thing is that uh, when we talk about hot and cool tier, they're always online. It means you can always download the data. You can always retrieve the data, no problem. When we talk about archival, data is always in offline because the idea over here is that uh, you want to keep the data and the idea is you don't want to access it maybe once in one year or maybe uh, just very, uh, you know, 
occasionally occasionally you want to access this data so based on that also you need to specify the policy and uh, as i said that it's an offline state and you need to rehydrate and if you move the data from say archival to cool or from archival to hot there will be a cost associated with that so all those things you need to keep in mind now another thing is as i said that uh, for how long you keep the data and uh, when you delete the data will also uh, specify what kind of cost you incur and we'll talk about that under the life cycle when i show you on the azure portal site so say for example if you keep the data in cool storage and you delete before 30 days are over then there is a cost associated hot there is nothing you can do anytime but for cool it is 30 days and for archival it's 180 days so you want to make sure that you specify the policy based on this again as i said that when i have this whenever i have this discussion i'm very trying to architect a solution with customer pricing gonna be very important they want to make sure that they don't overpay but at the same time they're compliant and they're able to meet their regulatory requirements so some of these components you need to keep in mind so data lifecycle management as i said is one of the feature it's a free feature that you can utilize to manage your data so let's go to the azure portal to see how we can utilize this and for this i'll be using a storage with the name abc cloud sa that's the storage account I have already created. And uh, if I go under configuration, you can see that it's a hot tier. I can always change it. So this I've already done. And in this, I have a couple of containers. So I have two containers, containers one, container two. But the thing that I want to show you, if you scroll down further under blob service, you see you have lifecycle management. I'll go right now, I don't have any policy. I'll go to add rule. You need to give a rule name. So let's say ITS. Right now, the status is enabled. I can always disable uh, if I want, but let's keep that default. Now the first option is saying that uh, move blob to cool storage, right? So as I said that, uh, you want to maybe put the data in the hot, so in case you're accessing this, but maybe after 30 days or 60 days, you might not be accessing that frequently. So you want to move the data from hot to cool tier. And rather than doing this manually, we can automate this process by inputting this policy within the lifecycle management. So say in my case, I will move the data after 60 days after the last modification to the cool tier. So as I said, that cool tier has lesser storage cost as compared to the hot tier. So I'll save that over there. Now, the second option is move blob to archival tier, right? So what my company requirement is, my company says that I need to have the data for the next 10 year. So I want to have this for the next 10 years. So after the last modification, the data will be moved to the archival storage and I want to keep this data after last modification, let's say after 180 days. Because just remember, we have saved ourselves from that early deletion cost, both at the cool storage as well as at the archival storage. So it was 30 days for moving the data or deleting the data from cool to archival and it was 180 days. So we are safe from that particular point, right? So that's what I have specified. And now once the data is sitting in the archival storage i want to keep it this for 10 years so 10 years means how many days it means 3650 days right and after that though it has the cheapest storage cost among all the tiers but i don't have this requirement of keeping the data after 10 years right so what i'll say is that delete the blob after that many days so i'll delete the blob after say 10 years in that case so i'll put 3650 365 days in a year times 10 3650 and uh, as you know that you also have this option of taking snapshot of your blob so if you're doing that obviously it is taking some storage but if you want to delete the snapshots the one that you have taken for your blob you can also say that uh, uh, after the blob is created, after that many days, you delete the snapshot. But I just, 
I have not done that, so I'll just leave that to the default. And the next thing you want to go is to the next is to the filter set. And uh, this gives me right built in tool. I can go and browse or I can give a path. So if I go and hit browse, you can see my container is already listed over here. So my both container one, container two. You can apply this policy on the entire container or you want to do on specific folder within that container, you can do that too. But for me, for the entire container is good. I will select that. And I can select multiple containers I want, right? So if in this container, in this storage account, if I have multiple containers, I can do that too. If I want to have a specific policy on specific containers, I can do that too. But let's say for both these containers, I want to have exactly same policy. So let me just take that, right? So with both containers added, review and add, I get a brief summary. So move to cloud storage, sorry, cool storage. 60 days after last modification has taken place, move to archive storage, 180 days after last blob modification, and delete after 3,650 days after blob last modification, right? So that is what my policy, my filter set is set to container one, container two, and let me just go and click on add. So my policy is enabled. And I get this also flexibility. So it's not that you're stuck with this. You can always change the policy. I can go just and highlight this. I can go disable, I can go delete. Or if I go inside this, I can always change the number. So if I'm, my SLAs or my policy requires me to change this, I can always tweak this as per my requirement. But this is where you come when it comes to managing your blobs or managing data, whether you're using this for uh, health sector saving maybe uh, surveillance videos or your backup data this way you'll make sure that you're not overpaying and secondly you're also adhering to the slas that you have agreed upon uh, and uh, you can keep the data for whatever time period you have agreed upon all that can be configured within data lifecycle management policy so this was a quick video on azure blob data lifecycle management policy. Hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.